Things are feeling foreign to many of us, and division makes us feel hungry for restoration. How many need to hear God's people tell about a God that meets us in the desert? How many more need us with joy, passion, and love telling them the greatest story? Thanksgiving for me has always been about story. Well, it's been about the food a lot of times too, but it's about the gathering around a table full of food that is intermingled with family and friends telling stories. More accurately, it's been about family stories. At our Thanksgiving table each year, we hear stories, fishing stories, childhood stories, funny experiences of the past year, tearful stories, celebratory stories, stories of past generations, and indeed sometimes even lament in the midst of loss. It was that one time of the year when my family, not just my immediate family, but our extended family, spent a long time around the table telling stories. The author of Psalm 78 understands the power of story and the absolute necessity of it. He understands that we cannot know God without stories, that we cannot know ourselves without stories. The psalmist knows that we cannot be the people of God without telling the story of God, passing the story on to each generation. Things that we have heard and known, that our ancestors have told us, the psalmist writes. Where does the power of story lie? What is it about a story that can so compel us? The stories around that Thanksgiving table made us stay for hours longer than any other meal of the year. And it all begins with, once upon a time, in the beginning, long ago and far away. We speak of getting lost in a story. But part of what draws us to story is the promise of finding. Finding a different world, finding another time, finding ourselves. Or, as Jan Richardson says, there is something in us that hungers for a story. An empty space that is shaped precisely to its contours. We reach for the threads that a story offers. We enter the rooms it opens to us. We inhabit the skin of another or somehow in the hands of a good story, we are returned to ourselves. And we are perhaps holding the threads of our own story a bit differently or entering a new space within ourselves or finding ourselves able to inhabit our own skin more completely. I heard it once said, God created us because God loves story. I love that. God created us because God loves stories. These last few weeks, I've been reading in Exodus and the story of the Israelites, we have found, they're, they're fun, they have found new ways to relate to the story of deliverance and living in the wilderness. Once this people were slaves in a foreign land, but God rescued them. Then the people got hungry in the desert and complained to God, so he rained down birds for them to eat and bread onto the desert ground. But still, the people grumbled. But God kept taking them back, finding ways to draw them to his heart and lead them into truth. 
We're feeling a bit in the wilderness, aren't we, in the world right now? We can relate to this Exodus wilderness story, this desire to be delivered. Things are feeling foreign to many of us, and division makes us feel hungry for restoration. How many need to hear God's people tell about a God that meets us in the desert? How many more need us with joy, passion, and love telling them the greatest story? The story that goes like this, when Christ came in the fullness of time, he came as the word made flesh, a story in motion. And he went into the world with stories on his lips, weaving them everywhere he went. Weaving story. A sower went out to sow. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of a robber. There was a man who had two sons. Ten bridesmen took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Jesus understood, Jesus understood that in a world where it can be so difficult to know God, to know ourselves, to know even others, a story can offer a language a doorway, a point of entry. He knew how a story can take us a little deeper into knowing, a little further down the road in our journey. We will not hide them from their children, the psalmist says. We will not hide these stories, the psalmist writes. And perhaps that's where the true power of a good story lies that it unhides something, reveals something, and someone we need to know. What stories are you listening to? What stories are you telling? How do you attend to your own story, even in the midst of the wilderness? Where have you experienced being lost in a story and being found? How might God be inviting you to look at your story with new eyes? I invite you now to listen in to a story of a church finding its way a bit in the wilderness. Hi, I'm Dr. John Perdue. I'm the pastor of Calvary United Methodist Church here in Calvary City, Kentucky, and I wanted to tell you our story. About 133 years ago, the Methodists in this town organized themselves and became the Calvary Methodist Church and have had a long and successful and wonderful ministry here in Calvary. And then about a year ago, things got very, very difficult. It was very stressful and very problematic as all of the difficulties within the United Methodist Church came to roost here. And we suffered and we prayed and we sang and we worked and we did everything that we could to stay together, to remain together as a church, but it just, it just didn't work. And about a month ago, we took a vote. At the vote, the church as a whole voted to stay within the United Methodist Church, but a significant group of our folks decided to leave after that. And, and so... After the vote, I was brokenhearted. I did not know what would happen. Most of the church was brokenhearted and did not know what would happen. But let me tell you what did happen. What did happen is that the Holy Spirit came and opened us up to a love and a sense of joy and peace and purpose that we had not felt for at least a year and I think a good long time before that. And, and so we who have remained here on the hill in Calvert are doing God's work here on the hill with a renewed vigor, a renewed spirit, and most importantly, a great deal of love for God, for one another, 
and for our community. And so we will remain the church here on the hill, the people of God called United Methodists in Calvert City, Kentucky. And it is my prayer for you that you will remain a strong follower of Jesus Christ. Amen.